Salutations! I'm Becca and this is Words and Other Malarkey. Welcome to another Books and Beer video where I take a book <laughs> and pair beers with it because that right there is class. I am super excited about this one because it's girly. <laughs> it's been so long actually since I've read like a chick lit. Um, I tend to like gravitate towards I guess like sci-fi fantasy stuff and that's great you know but I hadn't read like a YA romance. Okay that's not true actually. I hadn't read one that was like so much like a chick flick in a long time. So this is Save the Date by Morgan Matson. Um, yeah, this was super fun. You may know her. She wrote uh, Amy and Roger's Epic Detour and Since You've Been Gone. I read half of Amy and Roger's Epic Detour a long time ago. I don't know why I didn't finish it. Um, I'm kind of flaky when it comes to books, but I remember enjoying it. So yeah, if this is familiar to you, like. Uh, Save the Date came out in 2018, so it's pretty recent. I'm kind of relevant, okay? I got this book before quarantine, and it took me until like two weeks ago to finish it. There was just a lot going on, guys, okay? Yeah, I really wanted to read something. I actually wanted to read something wedding themed because I am of the engaged variety. Don't, don't congratulate me, it's been like a year and a half. <laughs> um, we're getting married soon though, so I, you know, was in the mood to read something that had a wedding theme going on. So when I saw this book and that it was called Save the Date, I was like, ooh, yes, sign me up. <laughs> So this is about a girl named Charlie, she's the youngest of five siblings and her older sister is getting married. So all of her siblings are coming home for the weekend to celebrate her sister's marriage and it's been a long time since they've all been together and Charlie has like all these fond memories of her siblings and the good old days when they were all together so she's really looking forward to this weekend she has this idea in her head of how it's supposed to go and of course it doesn't go according to plan, hijinks, shenanigans ensue and she learns some things about you know the tendency to romanticize the past and to romanticize your family there's some like really honestly like relatable stuff going on in here and it's interesting because you know a lot of YA deals with um, you know broken families and that's not that there isn't family drama there is it's like an estranged brother that she hopes doesn't come to the wedding and ends up coming and of course that like is its own like plot arc um, that is really sweet actually but yeah like usually you start with a broken family this one started with a girl that really really loves her family and has to learn that families aren't perfect and things can't always be like they were in the past anybody that has siblings knows that there's drama you know there's like little tiffs and there's stuff you know but like you can still love each other at the end of the day and that's kind of what the book is about it's like you're not perfect your family isn't perfect but at the end of the day you still love each other so yeah it was a super sweet book one of the interesting things about the way that it's constructed is so in the book her mom is a comic strip artist like you know Garfield <laughs> but okay so like each section starts with a comic and at first I thought okay this is like they're like referencing like a newspaper comic that's neat no this is a hundred percent fictional this is a totally made-up comic obviously based off of ones that really run in the paper um, I used to read the Sunday comics that's pretty wild I haven't had a newspaper in years but I actually used to deliver newspapers back in the day so that's an era right there <laughs> so that was a big part of the kind of is ethos the right word I feel like it's probably not the world building is that her mom had this comic strip that she based on her family and the siblings as they were growing up. So the main character has this like idealized version of her family that has a lot to do with the comic strip. So it's kind of a cool like parallel and um, you know one of the big parts of the story is that aside from the wedding like they are her mom is ending the comic strip so that's kind of like the end of an era for them and so there's a lot of like things that come with that. Yeah, it was just a really unique feature and I thought it was really cool and it really added something to um, kind of the characterization of the family. And uh, yeah, this book reminded me a lot of like a mix of 16 candles versus Cheaper by the Dozen. A lot of antics, a lot of things going wrong. It was very much like romantic comedy-esque and 
one of the big things that like really surprised me was this book, which is like 400 pages long, takes place over two and a half days. I don't think I've ever read a book that takes place over that short of a time span. And it was very interesting. Now that meant that every chapter, you know, like time-wise, very small amounts of time, maybe an hour or two. You get a lot of detail, you get a lot of, and then this happened, and then this happened. It wasn't, it didn't drag, it didn't feel like too drawn out, but it did feel like sometimes there were a lot of details included that weren't necessarily important to the main plot or that were repeated because like there was really nothing else to say in that moment. But overall, like I feel like the pacing, like it worked and it was like, whoa, like what else can possibly happen in these like 24 hours? <laughs> and apparently a lot because it's, it's a, it's a rom-com and you know, <laughs> shenanigans ensue. <laughs> I guess my only criticism of the book is that there was like a plot twist at the end. Maybe I'll like, cut this out because it's kind of spoilers where the parents announced that they're getting divorced and it kind of led up to it a little bit like it had been implied that they were fighting sometimes but it almost felt like misdirection like it was just something that uh, Charlie was worrying about on the side but it just didn't feel like the characters of the mom and dad were developed enough for me to really like feel the emotional impact of their announcement that they were getting divorced but you know I mean and I guess that comes with a story that takes place in such a short time frame. You just don't have time to flesh out a lot, but it was also 400 pages. There was a lot of details included. There could have been more scenes with the mom and dad. There was just a lot of other characters to follow too. So that's my only thing. Yeah, it was a great, it was a fun book. I enjoyed it a lot. It just, it did like take a lot of time for me to read because I'm a slow reader and because every chapter had so much detail. But if you like a lot of detail, if you like a lot of story beats and you like rom-coms with a lot of like family themes, like you're really gonna enjoy this. Okay. Let's get to the beer. <laughs> of course, for a girlier book, I had to choose some girlier beers. And I really focused on aesthetic for this one. As you see on the cover, she's wearing like a coral dress. <laughs> um, actually, the, f um, the first beer I thought of as I was reading this was this one, the Stiegel Rattler. I think it's, yeah, it's Stiegel. Not just because of the color scheme, but also because this is just such a like summery, like something you drink at a party kind of beer and yes it does match the cover it does um <laughs> but i was just like oh my god like i just feel like this beer like <laughs> this beer speaks to me um <laughs> with this book and i actually i actually drank this beer while reading it yeah i was i was that girl <laughs> and it paired very nicely okay so i've had this one before and if you like beers that don't taste like beer you will love this because this basically tastes like juice. Mm -hmm. We're gonna pour it into a regular glass because it's basically juice. Whee! Just pour it on the side. You're supposed to pour beer on the side with the glass at like a 45 degree angle, and then when you get like somewhere at the top, you turn it and then you just let it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. I never pour beers, right? Okay, as you can see, it's basically the color of lemonade. It looks like lemonade. It kind of smells like lemonade. <laughs> it smells like, you know those grapefruit cough drops, like the um, the Halls ones that are like basically candy but they have vitamin C in them? That is exactly what this smells like. I love those things. <laughs> um, yeah, you got like this really sea foam texture looking foam head on the top. And this hazy lemonade looking color on the bottom. Grapefruit, citrus, grapefruit it's a rattler a rattler is juice and beer 2.25 percent alcohol it's barely alcohol guys if you're not big on alcohol if you like have a really like low tolerance for it but you like having a drink every now and then this beer is perfect for you because it's so low abv it's basically juice <laughs> and it is delicious so sweet does not taste like beer at all tastes like I don't know. It doesn't even taste like that really sour grapefruit taste, and I love grapefruit, but like the sour edge of the grapefruit is is gone. It's just the sweetness of like a nice citrus beverage. It tastes like some kind of cocktail. It is absolutely fantastic. Perfect summer drink. Definitely like the kind of thing that you could uh, drink at a wedding and just feel super like fancy 
and not have to worry about, you know, going a little overboard because it's barely even alcohol. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's the Stiegel. Okay, now, up to this point, all the beers that I've tried are ones that I've had before. These two, I have never had before. I chose them specifically because they reminded me of the book and I like their aesthetic. So this is, gonna, this is a new experience for me and for you because I've never had these before. So um, I saw this and I geeked out because I love, you know, I'm a sucker for like cool labels and this is such a cool label. This is Social Club Seltzer. It's an old-fashioned hard seltzer cocktail, okay? It's, I don't know if it technically counts as beer. These are like beer-esque, you know? But it was in the beer section, so I'm just gonna roll with it. So if you know what an old-fashioned is, it's a drink that's basically all whiskey. <laughs> um, my husband-to-be really likes them. I do not. But I guess they make a seltzer version. Just look how beautiful this is, okay? Like the colors and the fonts. Okay, let's, let's open it. Let's check this out. I love... You can see like the top is like a copper color. That is so neat. You're so used to seeing the silver aluminum can. Okay. Yeah, I guess this is like kind of channeling White Claw. I thought about getting a White Claw and then I was like, eh. Um, this is like a random drink glass that we have. So, oh, oh my God. <laughs> right off the bat, I smell whiskey. <laughs> Yikes, guys, I do not like whiskey. Well, okay, so the reason I chose this one, I should probably explain why it, like, has to do with the book. They, their rehearsal dinner is basically at a social club. It's at, like, this hotel that's, like, kind of fancy. Also, it takes place in Massachusetts, which just makes me think, you know, that, like, East Coast, like, fancy, posh lifestyle. They're not, like, supposed to be, like, a super rich family, but, like, they're definitely, like, more well off than most so like yeah they kind of have like a social club going on um i think there's also a scene where they go into like a country club to track someone down so this just seemed like it fit really well with what happens in the book and kind of the uh yeah the east coast ness of it <laughs> god it's like whiskey <laughs> oh my god i don't know if i'm gonna like this it's supposed to be beer, and it just smells straight up like whiskey. Diluted whiskey. Whiskey with a nice sweet edge. Okay, I can actually vibe with this. I can't do straight up whiskey, but this tastes, yeah, this tastes like an old fashioned that's been diluted and carbonated. <laughs> and maybe mixed with beer. I don't know if there's beer. Wow, that is really interesting. It has like a sweet, almost cherry taste to it. I think that old fashions have like a cherry in them. You would know. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You have got to try this. You will like this a lot. It's like if you don't want the intensity of an old fashioned but you like the idea of it, you will like this a lot. There were other cocktails that they had. Um, I think there was like a sidecar and one other one but I liked I don't know, I like the color of this one the most. And something about something that says old fashioned like it reminded me of you know, I guess kind of the old-fashioned um, attitudes of the main character as she was, you know, reliving, trying to relive the past. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that is so wild. Smells like straight-up whiskey, though, so, you know, at your own risk. But it doesn't make me gag like, a, like an old-fashioned would. Okay, next up is Rosé for Days. Day A. <laughs> D-A-Z-E by Oscar Blues Brewery. Okay, so like I wanted to get something that was like, okay, both of these are not really beer. They're like barely beer. This one is a rosé style ale with hibiscus and prickly pear. So another fruity beer. I mean, you know, with like the whole wedding vibe and the girly vibe, I really wanted to get things that like Girls would like. <laughs> Girls can like beer, of course they can. But look how pretty this can is, okay? It's pink, it's got flowers on it. And like when you're when you think weddings, like you usually think wine, and I wasn't gonna do wine, but like I knew there were like rose beers, so when I saw this, I was like, ooh, rose, you know, that's really like romantic and makes you think of weddings. So yeah, this works really well. So okay, let's crack this open. Ooh, sour. It smells like a sour. 
Oh my. Wow. I'm, I'm awing at the color. I'm pretty sure, yeah, a whole can will fit into this glass. It's kind of the point. It looks like a glass, or it looks like a can, but as a glass. Look at this color. It's like a rosy, like a rose gold amber color. That is really neat. I don't think I've ever seen a beer this color. It almost has like a pinkish hue. And it smells like a sour. It just smells like sour. I don't know like how hibiscus or prickly pear factors into this, but let's give it a taste, shall we? Yeah, it tastes like a sour. But like a really light sour. I don't get any, maybe like a little bit of rosé, like that like sour grape taste that rosé has. I'm not getting a whole lot of hibiscus or prickly pear, but it definitely has like a nice like zing to it. It's hard to describe. Like it's not sour like makes you pucker. It just kind of has like a brightness to it. That's good. That's really refreshing. That's actually like super light. Like I could drink, I probably will drink this whole thing. That tastes more like beer though. So whereas these two are like barely beer, this one actually tastes like a beer. So if you're looking for that, you'll find it here. Let's uh, let's line them up, shall we? God, these colors are incredible. Just like the contrast. Aww. Oh, I have an honorable mention real quick. I didn't want to open it because I only wanted to limit myself to three. One of the things I wanted to do with these was if they drink a beer and mention it in the book, I wanted to mention it. Um, so <laughs> they do, the main character does mention Natty Light. I don't know, I don't think she had like this specific one, but like um, this one is Catalina Lime, when Cherry and Lime become best friends. It looks really good, but I am not gonna open it because I have three open beers here and I don't need any more of that. So yeah, honorable mention, get yourself some Natty Light. <laughs> okay, now I gotta rate them. I think I'm gonna go Rosé for Days first because I really like sours and as, like, as good as the Rattler is, it is like basically lemonade. So if we're talking beer here, Rosé for Days, Rattler, Social Club. It's good, but it still tastes like whiskey. <laughs> and I'm not a huge fan of it. But just look at these colors, guys. Look at the, look at the aesthetic. <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely, like, am very impressed with how these actually all came together. So, if you're looking for beers to pair next time you're reading Save the Date, <laughs> consider these. And if you have, if you have beers that you like, to pair with uh, Chiclet and the lovely rom-com YA stuff, <laughs> uh, drop them below and I will see you in the next video. Be sure to give this the old thumbs up and <sighs> yeah, like, comment, subscribe if you like this video and want to see more. I would love to do more of these. Um, these are super fun. It combines two of my favorite things, so I might just do them anyway. All right, keep it weird and uh, Go, go, go drink some, some beer, maybe.